Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael, in today for Fran Stoddard. In our consumer connection this afternoon, we're going to be learning about rental housing in Vermont, and specifically, we'll explore the rights and responsibilities of tenants and landlords. Now, according to the 2020 Vermont Housing Needs Assessment, there are just over 80,000 housing units in the state which are used or are intended for renters. That same study shows that the vacancy rate last year was 3.4%, and that's down, the vacancy rate is down from 4.4% a year earlier. And those low vacancy rates make it harder for people to find housing, particularly rental housing. So to learn more about renting in Vermont and what resources are helpful and available to tenants and landlords, I'm joined by Lisa Jensen. Lisa is the Assistant Director of the Attorney General's Consumer Assistance Program at the University of Vermont. Also with us is Karen Ames. Karen is the Housing Education Supervisor with the Vermont Tenants Program, which is part of the Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity. Thank you both for being with us. Appreciate it very much. Good to see you. Thank you for having us, Well, So our discussion yeah, is going to focus on rights and responsibilities. Uh, but first, Lisa, a bit of a warning. Yes, um, watch out for scams. For those people who are searching for a place to rent, um, criminals like to use online platforms such as Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and to post fake ads to attempt to steal your money. So please verify the post. And if you have any questions, you can call our office, the Consumer Assistance Program, at 1-800-649-2424 or go to our website. And just to point out, Lisa, the information you're delivering just now is separate from rights and responsibilities. That has nothing to do with a tenant or a landlord. You're reminding people to be safe when they're out looking for rental properties. Absolutely. Okay. So, Karen, uh, I, I mentioned the base, uh, your program, the Vermont Tenants Program. Uh, maybe share with us some of the basics. What is it? What is it you do? Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about it. Um, Vermont Tenants is a statewide program, uh, so anybody can access our services no matter where they're living in the state, and they do, which is fantastic. Uh, we offer three services. The first is our hotline at 802-864-0099. And um, the second is our classes and workshops where we uh, talk about um, rights and responsibilities and basic tenant skills, as well as resources and strategies for finding housing. And then the third is advocacy and resources. And you'll see on the screen, they're the definitive guide. And I'll refer to that a couple of times throughout the program. Um, it's available on our website and it's also available in a hard copy, which we can uh, print out and mail to folks who don't have access to the internet as well. I think it's also important to point out, Karen, that that guide that you're showing us, the definitive guide to renting in Vermont, was put together by the Vermont Apartment Owners Association and the Tenants Program. In other words, this was a collaborative. This is not a, a one-sided piece. It's all the information you need about renting in Vermont is my understanding. That's true. And what's super nice about the guide is there on each page for each section, there's tips for uh, tenants and tips for owners. And I like that transparency, you know, so both sides can see what the what the rights and responsibilities are on both sides, because it's a professional contract and on both sides, they they both have rights and responsibilities. So let's talk about maybe some of the most basic information you'll find in there. What do first time <laughs> renters need to know? What do you want them to know? That is a really good question. And I think for first time renters, there's two things that I would want to, um, to offer. One is our tenant skills class. You can think of it as renting 101. It's all a discussion about rights and responsibilities as we've mentioned, but also how to get repairs done, how to ensure you get your security deposit back, um, how to communicate with your landlord and some fair housing law. It's pretty packed with everything you need to know. 
And I, you know, sometimes folks come to that class because they have a housing application in with a housing provider and the provider doesn't see that they have a, a you know, their first time renter, they don't have a landlord reference. So they ask folks to come to our class. And even though they've been asked to come to our class, what we hear is consistently is that they're super appreciative of the information. And just recently, one, one person commented, he felt more empowered to talk to his landlord, which, which felt um, like, you know, a good, a good end goal for us. Um, the second thing is I would encourage is first time renters, when they have a lease, they can call us uh, for a reading of the lease to make sure that they understand what they're signing, signing because it's a binding contract. So that's a service we provide that can be great for first time renters. And certainly not something that we want to overlook. That's the legally binding contract between uh, you and the person you're renting from. It may be the, one of the most important aspects of it, correct? In, yes, yes, indeed. Because whatever you sign, as long as it's, um, you know, whatever you sign, you must uh, abide by. Uh, the only caveat I put in there is that if there's a term that is not legal, then, you know, that would not be enforceable. But overall, what you sign is what you what you need to abide by. Yeah. So, Karen, what about the Rent Right program? Um, my understanding is that's something, again, through uh, your organization. Rent Right, is that correct? It is, and it's been around for a while, although in the last year we revamped it. So the Rent Right program is a collaboration between Vermont tenants and our CVOEO's Financial Futures program. And this is designed to provide both housing, uh, housing information, skills and resources, as well as financial. So there's a series of classes, uh, tenant skills I've mentioned, finding housing, getting ready to rent and sustaining the rent are all about tracking money, budgeting, understanding credit, and what does it really cost to start renting and how do you prepare for that? Um, and then at the end of the classes, there's a one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, session with, with a, um, a financial coach. And the outcome of that would be to really have an individualized budget uh, in hand, as well as a plan for either creating or improving credit. And at the end of that, the person would get a preferred renter certificate. And that kind of shows landlords, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm invested with gaining the skills and knowledge to be a successful tenant. So how do I find out more about that program, the Rent Right program, Karen? Right on our website. It's at www.cboeo.org backslash rent right. And you can sign up for classes right there on the web page as well. I'm going to ask our director, Adam Wright, to leave that on the screen just for a moment. One of the pieces that I took away from the guidebook pointed out, uh, Karen, that the owner's expectations are that the uh, my tenant will pay the rent on time, they'll take care of the property and tell me when repairs are needed. Conversely, the renters, they want the repairs done when they need it and they want to be left alone to enjoy their home. Is that, that's the summation that you guys put together and I, I, I guess I'm asking you to underscore that a little bit. What, what are the expectations that an owner has? What are the expectations that a renter has? Right, so there's a long list, but I'll stick to uh, the two pieces that you just mentioned, one being privacy and one being habitability. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of privacy, uh, a tenant has a right to privacy in their home. A landlord can enter with 48 hours notice in between certain hours of the day for specific reasons, uh, to make a repair or to show the property, for example. Um, and if that's not happening, we have, you know, our first course of action is always try to communicate with your landlord, speak up, talk to your landlord. Uh, very often that will resolve the issue. If it's not, then we do have sample letters on our website uh, to help communication along. And for habitability, we are getting a lot of calls on the, tent, uh, on the hotline right now about ha habitability. Folks have been, you know, it's been a pandemic. Folks have not been able to move. They've been in one place and, um, and also getting repairs done may have been a challenging during this time. Uh, so for habitability issues, say, um, and these are issues that affect a tenant's safety and health, and they've, they're violations of the rental housing health code. So we would encourage folks to call us at the a tenant hotline, and we can walk you through the process of notifying your landlord, using our sample letters, and also calling in code enforcement or a town health officer for an inspection um, if, if repairs are not getting 
getting so made. We're, we're talking about everything from the, the leaky faucet to a major electrical issue that, that might put somebody's health or safety at risk. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. for minor repairs, you know, it's a slightly different process, but, but bottom line, tenants don't have to live in a property that needs yeah. repairs. Uh, Karen, with a couple of minutes left, what about somebody who chooses not to renew their lease? These lease issues often uh, at, are, can be at the crux of disagreement. They, they don't want to renew the lease. It's over. They want to move out. Are there specific guidelines to follow once my lease is over? Yes, and one of the most important is to give proper notice. That's both sides, right? So on the side of the landlord, they would need to give proper notice to the tenant that they're not going to renew the lease. And on the side of the tenant, you have to give proper notice that you're not going to um, renew the lease or stay. And then a special note about building sales, because the, 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 the market's been so hot this last year and continuing, we're getting, a, we're getting a lot of calls about building sales. So if you have been notified that, that your landlord is selling the building, please know that if you're in a lease and uh, the, the owner has a signed purchase and sales agreement, that lease transfers to the new owner. So you do not need to move. If you're in a month to month situation, then that landlord with a signed purchase agreement could uh, give you 30 days notice and you would need to need to move. But any questions, just call us on the hotline. Well, let me bring Lisa back in. Lisa, the consumer assistance program, is there, are there help or support that you guys can provide with security deposit or refund disputes, anything like that? Yes, absolutely. If um, someone is um, waiting for the return of their security deposit, they can call our office and if they would like us to provide our letter mediation service, they can submit a written complaint and we'll contact the former landlord and facilitate the return of the security deposit. I also want to note in Burlington, there is a Burlington Housing Board of Review for those uh, tenants within Burlington and we can get folks connected to that resource as well. Well, let me point out before we go that the information and examples that we touched on today can be found in the definitive guide to renting in Vermont. You can go online to cvoeo.org and click on the link to services. It's a comprehensive guide put together by both renters and landlords. Uh, Lisa and Karen, I want to thank you both. A very uh, comprehensive look today at uh, some of the issues involving renting in Vermont. Uh, again, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Will. That is our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.